Hello, Sagittarius. I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh. This is your January 2024 forecast. Welcome. This is going to help you start the new year on the right foot. It'll give you everything that you need for Sun, Rising, Moon, or Venus, so feel free to watch it for that and watch the other videos associated with your chart as well. As always, we'll begin with channeled messages. This is basically where I work with spirit through dream interpretation and meditation and convey messages to you. The first dream that I want to talk about today had a mythological component to it. It was Thor and Thor's hammer, and I watched as he reached out in the dream and called it by name, and I watched as it raced into his hand. What I like about this is it's so rich in symbology here. The first thing is that something is within reach. It just requires you going for it, right? And the power of communication was definitely a part of this as well, saying, I want this, I'm ready, let's do it. All of these things can breathe life into something, and there could be a person, an opportunity, or a resource around you that just basically needs you to reach out and say, come on, let's do it. So you are the point of activation this month. And when you're ready to create that sort of symbolic spark, things are really going to start to take off in the right direction. Because Thor is a god of thunder, it's appropriate here that I would feature a couple of cards that would be connected to this. So I thought of thunder and lightning, it would be the tower card creating necessary change and really embracing it, knowing that you're the agent of change. So we can put these two together, the Knight of Swords, which is communication and action and looks a lot like Thor, um, and then the, um, the Tower as well. The final bullet is probably the most important and it's believing in your power. I used a cartoon example here that aired on just regular TV in the 1980s and 90s. Uh, it was He-Man and the main character would hold up a sword and say either I have power or I have the power, depending on the version that you watched. And, uh, and basically once he did that, the, the sword connected with this magical castle which imbued him with all of this power and made him like, you know, really strong. That was neither here nor there. It, the power of this was actually his belief in his capacity. So nowadays I would love to see a version where you don't have to kind of get all <laughs> bulked out and everything. It's just connecting with your power to manifest. And in, in doing this, you're, you're believing in yourself, you're saying to the universe, I have the power and I'm ready to do this. I don't even need a magical sword or a hammer or any other instrument other than my mind, my heart and my two hands. And that's all you need this month, Sagittarius. But you do, you will benefit from declaring and reaching out for something. That much came through really clear in dreams. The next series of dreams actually were very sort of diagnostic. I was being shown different parts of the body and a standard disclaimer applies here. I'm a medium, I do my best to interpret. If you're going through anything, obviously work with your doctor, but let me go through my mediumship and I'll tell you what I was seeing and you can use that as you will. So a big component of what I saw had to do with blood and the heart. They showed me the symbol for blood, then they also pointed to the heart space. So this could be for some of you, just a reminder to focus on things like blood sugar, blood pressure and cholesterol, since all of those things would affect the heart and um, just blood in general. The other thing is it could be an iron deficiency. So if you already have any of this in your family history or your own history, this is just a time to be more cognizant of that. I was also specifically shown, uh, again, around the, the, the sort of heart space, a rash um, or an inflammation. So there could be something, uh, if, you, if you ate spicy food or had some sort of a, a physical reaction, it could be in the esophagus. It could also be something in the upper part of the stomach, like um, acid reflux. And, uh, and then just in general, if we take this uh, level up, it could just be emotional sort of sadness that you're dealing with. The other thing that we might be looking at here could be environmental things that could cause inflammation here. Um, so dust, for instance, because this could even extend into the, the lungs. And um, so really, this is a time to detox on multiple levels, the environment, the food that you're eating and the relationships and, and sort of situations that you involve yourself in. For whatever reason, this is the space I was shown and it, it hits a lot of different organs. So as an intuitive, I'm just going to, again, highlight that it can be the heart, the lungs and the esophagus, maybe even the upper part of the stomach. Uh, so be kind to yourself. And if you're dealing with any of this, again, obviously reach out to a healthcare professional. Um, but for some of you, it's just going to be the three of swords energy, which is disappointment or sadness. So this is about trying to find either the higher purpose for whatever challenge you're going through, or for, for if you can't see it to reach out and get some assistance in kind of dealing with disappointment, which is a, a universal thing that we all go through from time to time. Some more body messages that I saw again, very specific last night. 
So uh, I was shown pressure points in the skull. And to me, it felt like this could be, for some of you, it could be the connection point where the spine meets the skull, kind of near the occipital lobe. Um, but there were also some points that were kind of higher up. Again, without having a degree in physiology, I'm not really sure what all of that means for you. But if you're feeling any tension or pressure back there, um, things like chiropractic adjustment, um, a massage could help. Again, talking, of course, to your doctor should be a part of this. But there could be some, speaking of the environment, ergonomical sort of things that you could do. Um, so get an ergonomic uh, sort of adjustment in your desk setup or evaluation. That was the word I was going to look for. When I was in a corporate environment, they did that for free because they really didn't want anyone to have a, like legal reasons to sue them. So usually most offices will provide that kind of service. And if not, reach out especially if you're feeling it here or here, you know, th those kinds of things make sense. But I'm getting like neck and uh, for whatever reason, the cranium as well. I was feeling pressure and spirit took off something from the back and I was like, oh, it feels better. So definitely check that out if it makes sense. Again, very specific messages here. <laughs> uh, the, those blocks, by the way, I'll pull it up one more time. This could be a cognitive block. This is also why I featured the Seven of Cups here, because sometimes that can be a card of confusion or distraction. So um, a lot of things to consider here to help you get into that energy of empowerment and movement. We don't want any blocks here or here whether it's a mental block or an emotional block or something physiological, definitely take care of that first and foremost, then reach out for whatever goal or opportunity it is that you're trying to call in and you have a really good chance of doing it. Now let's take a look at the cards and see what other messages Spirit wants to convey. As I give the cards a shuffle here, a reminder again, you can use this for Sun, Rising, Moon, or Venus. We're going to take a look at Sun, Rising, and Moon towards the end. Um, by the way, speaking of that, I'm also going to pull a bonus card for 2024, so stick around. There'll be a lot to see. As we take a look at your catalyst card, the focus is on the environment. So the catalyst, of course, helps you spark change, action, and movement in your life. And the area where you can make the most progress is in the environment. The house can represent, for some of you, moving in, moving out, moving up. Um, so all of those things. So possibly selling a house, getting a roommate, or moving. This is also about your environment. And remember, I was talking about uh, getting rid of any sort of toxins. So it could be environmental toxins, could be a relationship that needs to be improved. So it's your immediate surroundings that you want to focus on the most. This is also true for those of you that are looking at sort of like just nesting a little bit more, getting comfortable. Because speaking from my own experience, I had this past year, I've thankfully been in one space, but the year prior to that, I had to do a lot of moving. It's really difficult to focus. Um, I even had an injury between my moves because you're kind of, you're not grounded, you're discombobulated a bit. So the main message here is on finding grounding and making sure that you like where you live, where you work, or who you're living with. All of those things that constitute like 10 of pentacles energy. This is a time to really evaluate that. All right, let's take a look at the centermost card. We have the five of pentacles. The card is reversed. This is showing that there is some healing coming into your life. Why don't we go ahead and for just a moment, look at the traditional five of pentacles. With this, oftentimes you're healing a wound from the past. 
Sometimes it's our own sort of um, our ego, our self-confidence, even just the faith we have in ourself. And much like I was talking about at the beginning, where you're reaching out to the universe saying, I, I believe in myself, I have the power to do this. That's what's going to heal the five of pentacles. You can rely on you, yourself, even when you can't rely on others. We see two wounded people in the Five of Pentacles, and a lot of times the person that we needed the most in that moment, they just didn't have the tools or the capacity to be there and to support you. And that was more of an indication of them than you, especially if you were very young or if you were just in need and that person just didn't have what it takes. So really take that into consideration as you're looking into your past and thinking, you know, it, it might be time to release energy over something. This is also a reminder that you don't have to accept things that are less than what you would expect when it comes to someone not showing up in a relationship and really giving, you know, 50 50. Uh, it could also represent, you know, people trying to underpay or under appreciate you in any sort of given task. You're, you're going to really take the scales and bring them to center and say, no, uh, this doesn't work anymore. OK, so it's healing. And what we can see here, the reason that this rose is withering, not not because the flower is spent, but because there's no water, there's no fertilizer, there's no sustenance. So you really want to involve yourself in people, places and opportunities that provide the sustenance so you can bloom so that you can really go for it. OK, um, again, looking at the traditional card, which is going to give us a little more than the rose. Uh, this is also a time for us to focus on healing the body, but also specifically if there's anything going on in your feet, your legs um, or the ankles. You want to take care of that part of your body. Uh, inclement weather in a lot of parts of the world right now, so be careful of icy or snowy spaces. That's also something to be aware of. The one thing that's unique to this illustration is the thorn element of a rose. So sometimes we have to experience both the thorns and the roses for appreciation. So if you've been through a couple tough things, it's going to give you basically the context through which you're going to be appreciative for all of the new things that are coming through. And we saw a couple aces, so uh, let's We'll focus on those as they come through. Crossing that five of pentacles is temperance. I like this one because we see them, the this beautiful bird basically going between two elements, the water and the fire. The water is the emotional healing that we just talked about. Once you get past that, you can start to create this necessary spark and movement in your life. If we look at the traditional temperance card, it gives us a couple of additional messages. One is that a path is starting to reveal itself. All you have to do is take the first step. Things are getting better and brighter, as we can see by that crowning sun in the background. There's the iris that are blooming in the background, often associated with April. For me, I have a personal connection on the temperance card to the springtime, um, April in particular. So you're planting seeds that could grow in the next two or three months and are going to set you up for a really nice second quarter of the year. And I'm looking at quarter being three months at a time. So first three months are about growth, movement, and kind of like feeding all of those dreams and seeds in your life, seeds of intention. Speaking of which, there are two that are coming through. Deep past, this is a dream, a desire that wants to present itself. And right here, right now, there's an opportunity that's knocking. You may be kind of tugged between two different uh, trajectories and one is the passion and one might be again where the money or the resources are guess what there might be a third one and that's what we see here is you might be able to take this and find something like that by reaching out and saying do you believe in me do you want to support this so seeking some sort of additional compensation because some of you aren't getting enough maybe seeking an investor if you're starting something new or just saying I want to do this can we do this together seeking a partnership but let's just look at the ace as it is um, so the Ace of Cups in the deep past is actually a really good sort of representation of the internal work that you've been doing. So some of you are already 80 or 90 percent through the Five of Pentacles, which is you've learned to love, accept, celebrate and lean on yourself. And in doing so, you don't necessarily need the other person for validation. And as you start to get stronger and more confident, um, becoming this Ace of Cups upright, which typically is shown overflowing with love and light and energy, other people will be drawn to that because you're self-sufficient. There's no, co you're, you're basically overcoming codependencies and any sort of lack in, that, that existed in the past. So know this, at least from the perspective of tarot and spirit, which is speaking through the cards, you are worthy. You can do this. All you have to do is reach out, take the cup and say, yes, I want this. 
when you truly feel that you do, okay? And in this particular period of time, Sagittarius, you're really good at manifestation. The High Priestess with the Ace of Cups, connecting your heart to your in intuition and your intention, can really make things happen. So this is a time when creativity is starting to really come through loud and clear. Some of you may be also going a little bit deeper into your intuitive development, spiritual development, um, religious development. They're all connected to the High Priestess. And this is just basically power, internal sort of power and, and intuition and intention and bringing that all into the practice. I like that we see this beautiful crystal ball in front of the High Priestess because it's reminding you, I always mention the Two of Wands and powers that. So we always want to be focusing on where we are, where we're headed, and know that that's happening, and look for any synchronicities that open up to help you get there a little bit faster, okay? Lean into your intuition, into your gut instinct. It won't lead you astray. And that's all I really need to say on that. Um, these are pretty auspicious here. By the way, if we look at the traditional temperance card, it's, um, it's an angel. So Spirit's been guiding you to exactly where you're at right now. There might have needed to be a disappointment. Maybe you needed to see someone uh, for who they truly were, and that may have been a little bit painful, but that's nudging you towards this path, uh, and it's allowing you to fan your own flame of passion for something really, really cool. We see another angel coming through here in judgment, just represented by a dove, but there's a, you have two angels. An angel protecting you and helping you heal the past and, a, and an angel that's pointing you in the, in the direction of the future. You are guided. You are protected. Know that, okay? Let's look at the Hierophant. And this is the key and this is in the crowning position for you. Keep an open mind. Normally the Hierophant's an old man, um, often represented by a papal figure with two disciples. They're gone. We normally see two um, interlocking keys in front. They're gone. You just need one key, a skeleton key. And you don't need someone to tell you that you can do it. Notice what we see in the background, lightning, just like the God of Thunder, Thor. Um, so when you speak it, when you say it, when you, when you say, I want this, I don't want this, that we're doing this, it creates this new sort of like ripple of opportunity. And then you become the skeleton key to open it up. So you are the portal, you are the gatekeeper, you are the agent of change. You don't need that other person anymore especially if they said no, <laughs> or especially if there was a place where you were underappreciated. You're just leaning into your own power right now, and that's an exciting thing, uh, at least from my perspective. As we take a look at the energy of the near future, we have the Judgment card, and this is another angel here. We can see an angel coming forth and saying, are you ready? If you are, there's a chance to reinvent, to be reborn, to basically explore untapped potential, uncharted territory, and do it with flair, do it with passion. Ultimately, this card is saying right here, right now, this is the moment. Are you ready? If you are, you've got a second chance for something really exciting. If you are, you have the energy of spirit behind you to help propel you forward. And also, it's a reminder to let go of things that you can't control. For instance, someone else may have made their mind up about something and they're moving forward and judgment is coming through to say, that's out of your control, but what's in your control is your reaction to it and how you're going to manage your own trajectory. So in the vein of looking at you and how you can manage things, we actually get some indication here on how to be successful. A very unusual Seven of Wands. If we look at it side by side with this Seven of Wands, we can see that instead of having to push back, which you can always do with the Seven of Wands, it's a good defensive card, there is an alternative this month, which is simply just to move forward. You don't have to uh, you don't have to apologize for, for who you are or what you're doing. You don't have to get people to agree. You can simply just be and be at peace with yourself, your path, your passion, etc. Other people will take note and they may relent. They may fall back like we see on this. If, however, you need to activate the defensive stance, you can, you can get into that energy. But you shouldn't have to go into this as much as you have in the past. It feels like it's getting easier for you. And I think it's getting easier because... Once you truly know that you don't need approval, then it, it doesn't feel like you have to always, you know, try to explain yourself or, <laughs> or get people to agree with you, okay? Because this card can indicate a lack of efficiency, one thing that I would say is just look at how many things you're committed to this month. Extracurricular, um, you know, work co contracts, things like that, and even social 
engagements and just think to yourself, is this really helping? Am I really getting a lot out of this? Or am I simply just pulling the rubber band a little bit too thin? Work smarter, not harder. And feel this month the freedom of not having to validate or explain yourself, especially to people that don't really need or need to have a say in what you're doing, okay? That's going to free up some of your energy as well. Lead by example. In the environment, we have an ace, an ace of pentacles. It's upright. It's good. This can be a new job. This can be a love interest. Uh, someone reaching out and saying, I'm interested in working with you or I'm interested in buying whatever product, service, or idea you have to offer. It's good, folks. So if, if you're unemployed looking for work, this is auspicious. If you're working, this could be growth. And if you're retired, there may be something still that you can tap into that is going to make you feel um, wanted, needed, appreciated. You could also be growing your finances. It's good no matter how you look at it, okay? So there's an opportunity within reach, very nicely connected to the sort of Thor metaphor that came through in dreams. And it's just your, basically it's up to you to decide when you're ready. Because there is some sort of a release from the past that has to happen first. Then we see this growth and movement and good things start to happen. As we take a look at hopes, fears, and opportunities, we have the nine of wands reversed. So the first and the most important thing here is to continue to get some perspective on just how far you've come. Some of you might actually be looking over your shoulder and thinking, you know, could I have done better here? Why am I not further? Uh, the main thing that this is reminding you is that you're pretty close to completion. You've, you've gone a long way up to the top there of the staircase. So don't lose track of the progress. Don't be too hard on yourself. And if we look at the traditional card here, it aligns with what I was feeling in the cranial area. So we have the bandage around the head. Some of you may have tension headaches, uh, TMJ. Uh, there, could either, there could also be some things going on in the jaw. Uh, definitely take care of mental health and anything that's evol involving rather the head or the cranial space. Um, and then ultimately, this is a card of perseverance. If we look at the traditional card here, it's saying you've come a long way. You're one or two steps away from completion. Take a, take a moment, take a deep breath, and finish what you've started. And if you do that, I feel like great things are on the horizon for you. But it is just a matter of recalibrating. And if there is something that you need to do and it's going to require a day, a week, a month, do that. Take care of that first because it's better to deal with that issue now than to wait and then have to sort of do cleanup later, okay? So that's all I'm getting on that one is self-care and perspective. You're much closer to getting something done than you might imagine. Now we have the outcome here, which is the hanged man. A necessary pause, a necessary delay, a chance to look at things from a different point of view, because the hanged man does just that. The bat is all about listening. It sees through sonar, right? It also uses other senses like smell and whatnot. But if we're looking at this, listen, there could be something that's incoming, an opportunity, a solution, and an idea, or any number of things, but it comes from you sort of like just tuning in and listening. And that's gonna be the key to your success. Also not rushing. So if we take a look at these, these two here actually, this is about slowing down for a moment, looking back, making sure that you didn't forget something, fixing something if necessary, taking a, bre a break and addressing any of the sort of issues that we talked about in health, and then moving forward because you can then take this opportunity and really run with it. And it's important to just pause, reflect, and also get behind this, the belief. Once you believe, this card will dissolve as well. All right, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit further and go into the areas of health, wealth, love, and destiny. We're going to start with health, and we have a card here that says despondence. It's reversed. That's actually auspicious because this can represent a period in your time where you're lacking confidence or hope, uh, and the reversal of this is saying you believe in yourself. <laughs> we can see her kind of like pulling at her hair. It's very much that nine of wands energy feeling like, how did this happen or why am I here? We can see someone here that's maybe adding to that. So one thing that I'm pulling from the sort of illustration here is take a step back and really evaluate those connections in your life, the people in particular, and think, you know, is there someone that's agitating me and getting into my head a little bit, giving me a headache? <laughs> and it could just be the energetic headache when someone's 
you know, you can hear their voice in your head because of an argument that you had earlier that day. And also there could be someone around you that makes you feel that sense of deflation. And that's really what I get with this. We want to lift you up, inflate your energy and your ego so that you can move up to the next level. Um, especially if you've been in that state of someone saying you can't, you won't, etc. Okay. So cutting cords, uh, cutting ties, pushing back. This is also a card of boundaries. You can restate, I said this isn't going to work. We're not going to do that. No. Um, or if someone keeps pushing you to do something that feels wrong, say, I don't want to do it. No. <laughs> all right. So that's the first message there. Let's go ahead and look at all of the cards here and see what additional messages outside of what I already channeled earlier are coming through. Judgment is a second chance. You may have had a brush with something challenging in health, a close call. Some of you could even have had a near-death experience and you've come back. This is spirit saying your job isn't done yet. You've got more things to learn, more things to do. So take that second chance and also run with that. What else are we seeing here? An understanding that something that you put on the shelf, a dream, an idea, it's coming back now and you have a chance to make it happen. Don't second guess your potential to do that. Even though we're looking a little bit at wealth here, it has to do with emotions, which affects your health. You're very much attuned to your body. So if something doesn't feel right, or if you feel like, oh, I need to go to this doctor to check this out, do it. Follow up on those hunches. Let's see. You may want to work with people that have, um, I would say, more uh, modern. It could be more modern technology, more modern viewpoints. You might want to get a second sort of opinion here. Hierophant is typically, like I said, very traditional. A reversed hierophant can be someone that uh, has is very up on like research and development and new things. So maybe you want to try something different that hasn't been tried before and you're seeking out a second opinion. Most of the cards are pretty good. This is a little bit of stagnation. So we want to make sure that you're, you're moving your body. Um, the seven and the nine of wands can actually be overdoing it. So you may benefit from having uh, a trainer, a coach, or someone managing you just to kind of keep keep you on track and make sure that there's no injury. If you're doing something on your own, don't push your body past what feels right. It's really important. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. It's pretty manageable overall. Take one step at a time. And that's basically what the temperance card is reminding you. Okay, let's move on from health to wealth. This is your resources, life, purpose, and career. We have a beautiful card coming through in this area, and it is the scales, basically justice and justice and balance. With this card in reverse, it's saying there could be something that's out of balance. This could simply be how much you're working or how much you're spending. So you're just going to rein that in. If we look at this as a justice card, it's saying there's something that isn't right. As we talked about earlier, someone may be undercompensating you and it doesn't sit well with you, right? And so you're going to basically fight for what you deserve. So this can represent taking necessary legal actions. It might also be leaning on a lawyer to help you understand, you know, a legal document. And that makes sense, too. This also represents no. And we have, again, that indication of pushing back and saying, no, I'm not getting enough or no, I don't want to do it. And the clearer you are on that, the more it's going to help you open up the opportunity that we see here, which is what it's all about and allow you to get kind of further along your path here. So work life balance, monetary balance and bringing things into the light, into justice. All of that stuff is coming through. You're going to find your even ground and I'm happy to to see that in wealth. Let's specifically look at the cards and see if there's some other messages for everybody, and then I'll break it down for those that are working or retired. So if um, just we look at what's going on for everyone, judgment is opening you up to imagine something beyond whatever it was that you just did or whatever you are doing. This is an open door or a portal. So this is a chance to explore possibilities. If you believe it, then you can actually see it and manifest it. Forget about right now. Focus on what's possible and what's opening up in the future. Again, you are the best conduit. I talked about Molnir earlier, uh, Thor's hammer. This is a chance for you to call in something and you have the skeleton key to make it happen. All right. You don't have to rush anything. That's the key here. 
go at your own pace. Let's break this down into three categories for those that are working, looking for work, or retired. If you're currently employed, this is a month where you can open a door. We see the Hierophant with that key, we see Judgment, which is reinvention, and then we see an opportunity here. It's much like He-Man and Thor, you have to say what you want, and for many of you, you're, you're really kind of advocating for more. There's a lack, could be a lack of income, a lack of title, but you reaching up and reaching out really can open a door. So there is the potential for growth. And if someone pushes you, push back. You have a chance to get this. We have, we have the card of success here. So this is you pushing and this is you receiving. A little worse for the wear, but it's, it's worth the journey, uh, especially if this is something that you want. Show your passion, show your worth. If they don't see it, go somewhere else because we do have this as an opportunity in the environment. So it can be your immediate environment or beyond that. Remember what we saw here in the Catalyst card. Do you feel at home? Do you feel appreciated? Do you feel the love, support, and commitment that you would normally get in the Ten of Pentacles? Because if you're not, you can find that somewhere else. Let's look at some other things. Let's say you're staying, you've already gone through some of this changing and shifting. What we see is overwork here. This is someone who is working hard, but not necessarily efficiently. This is the wear and tear that it has on your body or your mental fatigue that sets in. And this is you slowing down, pumping the brakes a bit. You don't have to do that. And it's hard. It's hard to say no. It's hard to push back. It's hard to miss a deadline. But if it's all you can do, it's okay. And this can also help you get more support in the long run, because if you continue to toe the line and do too much, they're never going to expand. So for some of you, it's just pulling back a little bit. There may be a, a new person coming in. The judgment card can be a change in leadership, a change in uh, also overarching vision. And you have to decide if you're, you're on board with that. Overall, I like that we have a couple aces. And I like that there is a lot of movement and, and basically progress that can be done. Just don't rush. That's the main thing. Everything will happen in cosmic timing. If you have to push too much or if you... Uh, or if you feel like you're trying to accomplish things on arbitrary deadlines, this is just saying it, it needs to make sense in the heart space first and foremost, okay? Let's move now and take a look at those that are seeking employment. So the judgment card comes through as a reminder to think outside of the box. So does the Hierophant in reverse. Some of you may be walking that line of self-employment, so you're going to do something that you've never done before. And this is the month to try that if you're interested in that. This is also you deciding to go back and finish something. Maybe it's you know, going back to school and getting a degree. Maybe it's trying something that you were told you couldn't do before and saying, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot more life experience now. I think I can do this. So this is you pushing back on someone else's lack of imagination and trying it anyway. How can you find work? Well, this is interesting. It, there's a lot of competition, Seven of Wands. Um, it's persistence that wins the day, but I think the thing here is these are very pushy cards. Push to a point, but realize that if you keep trying and you don't hear back, that in and of itself is also a message to, to look in a different direction because there should eventually be some reciprocity. I think this is trying a different path and repackaging your skills a bit. You may not have thought that you could do something, but if you kind of pull together all the experience, there could be a different path in front of you. So don't be afraid to throw your hat in for consideration for something that you normally wouldn't. That sort of left of center option could actually be exactly what you need and exactly what they need as well. Creativity and a little bit more control looks like something that you're also interested in. I feel like for the next couple of weeks here, it could be a little bit slow. This can represent at least a week to a week and a half of nothing. This could also be another month and a half of pause and stagnation. So this is why it looks like the opportunity for growth is something completely different. So explore those options out there, all right? If you are retired right now, then what we see here again is, uh, you don't need it for me, but the cards are showing permission to do something completely different. There's mentorship, of course, you could teach, you could, you could help others. Some of you are actually focusing a lot on physical fitness right now and taking care of your body. But the main thing here is investing in yourself and investing in your dreams. And I'm all for that. Um, I think that also like the spiritual energy that's coming through here, you can do a lot with right now as well. And I think that's everything. Um, let me see if there's anything else. The judgment card in general, this hits for all categories, whether you are working, looking for work, or uh, are 
retired. It's basically saying life is finite. We never say life is short here. You never know how long or how short it might be, but we can say that there's a beginning and an end point. So with that finite amount of time, why not maximize it? Um, don't wait for tomorrow to go after something that makes your heart sing. And don't be afraid to advocate for something that you deserve or something that you want. Now is the time to take action on a goal or dream, not tomorrow. Okay. And I think that's everything in this category. So let's go ahead and move on to love and relationships here. This is all types of relationships first, then we'll delve a little bit deeper. So we have honor your beauty, your own beauty, internal beauty. Thank you, uh, Archangel Yophiel, for helping me discover my inner and outer beauty. We are usually the hardest on ourselves. Others don't look with the same critical lens that we do. Sometimes there is a parent or a friend that may be more critical than you, but oftentimes the lens is, you know, we have to just sort of adjust that. So whether it's external or internal, this is a chance to basically say, you know what, this is a divine collaboration here, this, this person, this vehicle. So I am going to celebrate it and make the most and not judge harshly because uh, it's something that was divinely decreed. So celebrate your divinity, your inner and outer beauty. And when that happens, lo and behold, if I can hold the card, <laughs> you embody the energy of the Ace of Cups. Have you ever noticed that someone who smiles, who has a sense of humor, who is kind, who is just generous and smart and has all of that energy, they can be even more beautiful than someone who may have traditional outward beauty traits that we would kind of value because all those other things just light them up from the inside out. So really focus on amping up the inner beauty. It can put you head and shoulders above others who may have outer beauty, but they haven't done the work internally. Okay, so focus on that. It's going to help you out. And if there's anyone in your life that devalues your, your, who you are, this is also a chance to sort of say, no, we're not doing that anymore. Um, so stepping away from people that just can't celebrate your success or lift you up or be on the same sort of energetic level, it's time to move in a different space. All right, let's break this down. We're going to look at those in a relationship, those that are looking for love and those that are happily single. So if you are in a relationship right now, what I'm seeing right now is for some of you, things from the past that are coming back, insecurities that your partner doesn't necessarily see, but you see. So everything that this card and the traditional five of pentacles, which I just held up show, that's what you want to focus on is inner beauty and saying, whoever said or did that in the past, that's on them, not on me. This is also, it's important to validate your partner when they do something well and to, to remind them to be constructive when they offer criticism. And the temperance angel doesn't get overly sort of like not going to let the blood boil, which is interesting because I, I saw blood earlier. So this can be the, the heat that you feel when someone says something and it just kind of makes you upset. Take a deep breath, ground yourself and really kind of think, where did that come from? Is it me? Is it their past? Is it an outside thing? And can I, can I transmute this energy? Is there a way that we can bring this into a higher level? That's going to be important. It's easier said than done. What I do love is that we have love in the past. So we, we got to keep it in that energy of love and appreciation. Um, these two aces work really well in a relationship. You need to have the passion. You need to do the work. And as long as you do those two things, you can continue to rise above any challenge. And that's the story of these three cards. Here's some stress that might be going on. One of you may be feel like, uh, maybe feeling like at this moment you're not moving as fast as the other partner in the career, in other aspects of your life, etc. One or both of you may just feel really stressed and tired because the seven and the nine of wands, just people that are working really, really hard. Take some time to say, I see you. I appreciate you. Try to stay open minded. Uh, this isn't a good month to I would say if there's an important discussion to have, not to argue, no finger pointing, really try to see a common ground and that's going to help. Um, overall, I, I feel like as long as you continue to invest the love and the work, you'll be okay. Change is the name of the game. If you're in a relationship, things are moving up. So some of you may actually have just moved in together for the first time. You may have been in a relationship for a long time, but now you're truly cohabitating and, and trying that level of partnership. And that can bring about some stress that didn't exist before. So ease into that. 
Some of you are in a new phase of your life. You may have lost a parent. You may have just um, had a child gaining or losing something. The judgment card can represent the growth challenges and changes that happen with that. And you may be in a new chapter of your life. The judgment card can also happen when you, when you graduate, when you retire, when you go through any big life change. So just celebrating that and taking your time. The hanged man is saying, don't rush. Just communicate and show the love and support and you'll be fine. All right, let's reset this. If you are looking for love this month, can you find it? Absolutely. Um, could be someone from the past coming in. Judgment is typically not just past life, but it can be someone from your past. And if it didn't work before, it could work now. We have a lot of interest, a lot of availability. The only thing that I'm noticing here is fatigue and exhaustion. You're working harder than normal or uh, more than normal and, and you wanna take care of your own health. You also might be just on the heels of recovery, financial or health recovery here. So that's the most important thing. Pump the brakes a bit, deal with that. You're manifesting things in real time. So if you're ready for something, all you have to really say is, let's do it right now, and options start to come in. They're not necessarily showing up as a certain sign or symbol, but I do get someone that's interested in the environment. So when you're ready to turn the key, someone's ready to come in. Uh, I can get maturity, though, from this, and I would say there's someone that is your age, or if they're younger, they're acting a lot older. So there's an old soul and a lot of maturity and someone who probably had a traditional background, but they've risen above that. So they're much more open-minded than their parents, their community, their culture that they came from, which is a good thing. Um, it's showing someone who, who has a much more open heart and mind than maybe you've experienced before. Just go slow. That's what I see in every level of relationship is just take your time. If you're happily single, good for you. The judgment card tells me you're very clear on that. You're like, I'm good. I can take care of myself. I'm happy. There's some work opportunities that are opening up. There's a lot of opportunity for you just to release the tension that you're holding in your body because I'm actually picking up on some of that and just enjoy and hang out in this moment in time. Deepening of your own sort of creative path, going back to school, for many of you deepening your spiritual path um, and starting something slowly and enjoying the process because no one's sitting there judging, rushing, or telling you what they think, and it's a nice thing right now. So if you're happily single, I'm not seeing new people rush in. There may be a business or a sort of just friend that wants to come in and they're invested in you, but I actually can see the solo energy and that many of you are at, are at peace with that. If you wanna try again um, at any point, this card is also saying when and if you're ready, the door is open, but um, I'm completely supportive of those that are single and happy, and we see that here. Okay, let's move into destiny, and we have clear, cancel, and release. Amen to that. So this is your trajectory. It is reversed. It's difficult for some of you to cut that cord, and one thing that I want to remind you of with cord cutting in general, just because you cut an energetic cord doesn't mean that you can't reconnect it, and I talked about this a little bit either in my last collective or the sign reading that I did before it, but it bears repetition. So let's say it's you and a best friend, and it's just been not what you normally would want it to be. They're in your headspace a little too much. You can just feel like they're, they're getting into your energy. So you're gonna breathe, you're gonna focus on clearing them, you're gonna cut those old cords, and then you're, you're completely able, both of you, to make a cleaner connection. Just think of like plumbing, right? Sometimes uh, old metal pipes rust and get corroded. So now you're gonna put in a nice new clear plastic one that's not gonna ever erode. You can see what's being exchanged and now it's gonna, you can even make it a bigger connection, uh, whatever you want, but you're like, now it's gonna be clean, clear, and on my terms. So you can always record if you want to, but right now there's something in your life that may not be serving your highest interest so it's a chance to clear, cancel, and release. There may be a contract, a literal contract, like in business or financial or something like that, where you're like, I don't, this isn't right. So you're not going to sign it. Or you're going to rectify something that's wrong. Someone made you do something and it wasn't legal. And so you're going to push back on that. This is about setting a nice, clear start to the new year so that everything that you build upon this point is going to be bigger, better, brighter, and it's not going to be a house of cards. The foundation is going to be firm, okay? We're going to now take a deeper dive and take a look at 
um, sun rising and moon sign messages. As I said earlier, um, you can always watch it for all of these portions, but we're sp specifically going to look at those now. So let me just turn the camera down. We'll shuffle the cards and see what's coming through. Then we'll take a look at the 2024 bonus card. Sun rising and moon. This is the second time in this reading that we have a balance card. So in the sun sign, we have the two of pentacles, which can represent accomplishing a better balance. We got the scales when we looked at wealth. And so this is a financial card. As I said earlier, some of you may be trying to find that happy medium between you know, what's going out and what's coming in when it comes to resources. But this can also include for many of you um, just the energy you're putting into a relationship or, or any sort of activity. We see the representation of that rubber band there, but it's perfectly balanced in this card and it's balanced through what? Change. We have a butterfly here. So you're going to change something and you're going to reach for one of these two pentacles and say, this is what I want. And we can see that ace here. Okay. So this is your chance to reclaim, reestablish, and basically cement in a new balance for the new year. And because it's a butterfly, change is good. Sometimes we need to see that, okay? Really positive energy overall. But definitely, if there's something that's pulling you out of your, your zone of happiness, this is the time to correct it, okay? Let's move on to rising. Queen of Wands. She's not afraid to stand up for herself. She is an out-of-the-box thinker, and she's really, really keen on embodying that which she believes in. So she sometimes just does it. <laughs> she's not going to sit there and articulate it too much. She's just leading by example. We can see all of the little eggs that she's protecting. So, you know, we have that Ace of Pentacles in the environment. This is definitely a month to birth, to create. We see more than one opportunity for many of you. So that's why it's important to really pick and choose wisely, as we just talked about. And I would say one thing at a time. You don't have to put the cart in front of the wheels or whatever that phrase is. Just take it one step at a time, one egg at a time, one seed at a time. Uh, this is a very inventive, creative, and great in leadership sort of energy here with the, the Queen of Wands. So all of those things are coming through. She nicely pairs with the High Priestess. She sees it, she believes it, she does it, okay? She's not afraid to push back and stand up uh, to any sort of challengers and she has a good chance of winning, okay? So this is a good time to focus on business and anything in your life that you want to basically see like with personal development, but definitely leading things with, with work, with career, and being the person that initiates. Let's move on now to the moon sign messages. And we have solar plexus energy coming through the sun reversed. And so for many of you, this is a chance to say, this is the moment that I want to let go. This is the moment that I want to focus on myself a little bit. It's okay for me to prioritize me. Absolutely. And it's also reclamation energy. Nicely connected to judgment. It requires your your agreement or your belief or your embrace of whatever it is that's in front of you. The universe can only open that door when you're ready to sort of put the key in. So are you ready to turn the ignition? Do you believe in something enough to let it go now and to really embrace? Uh, if so, this is a great creative energy coming through for moon sign. So um, Sagittarius moon, this is your moment. Okay, enjoy. Let's do a bonus card for 2024 and see what it's all about. I'm curious to see what's coming through here. Then we'll take a look at the final card. But first things first, bonus energy. What's the growth or development opportunity that's providing itself here in 2024 for the sign of Sagittarius? All right. So we have the Six of Pentacles. It came through reversed, but that's still pretty auspicious. It's another card of balance. So you got all three. Um, you got the Scales, which is like Justice. You got the Two of Pentacles, which is another balance card. And now you've got the Six of Pentacles. So in the reverse state, it's simply reminding you of the power, importance, and basically the permission that you have always to push back and say no, and to be picky and to be discerning. Because as you are more picky and discerning about what you put your time and energy into, so can you be more effective in all of those endeavors. That's it at the end of the day. Um, pick and choose wisely and know that you're on the path to growth 
and abundance. I look for this as my base level of success. So you, you're, you're right there. Uh, and for many of you that might be struggling with that two of pentacles, I don't know, am I going to do this? Yes, you are. And once you've picked that pentacle, that one of the two pentacles out and put your energy behind it, it starts to grow pretty quickly. Okay. Now let's take a look at your final question. This is anything that I have yet to answer that you still want to know for January. Go ahead and send that question out to the universe. Let me shuffle the cards and let's see what spirit has to say. This is fantastic, Sagittarius. We have the star coming through. It's a yes. There's no hesitation on this. The star does encourage you to step into the light, uh, into the spotlight, into the limelight. It's also a leadership card, and it's one of the most spiritual and soul-connected cards I could pull. So just like we were seeing with the judgment card, um, it's a time to rise up. Don't dim your light for anybody. Don't second guess your potential, your power. And in this moment, as you step closer and closer to your dream, your goal, or your inspiration uh, or aspiration, you're going to get a lot closer to that as well. And you're going to inspire other people. Okay, so great energy to end on. And that's everything for January. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, do me a quick favor. And if you've uh, never subscribed, subscribe. And everybody can like the video. It helps others find it. It helps me know that you like this as well. You can also share this with others. And opt into notifications. Sometimes Google won't send you stuff unless you click all. You can also give me a follow on social media. That way, no matter what, you'll get an indication of when I post something new or have any news and updates. Support is optional, but highly appreciated. It helps me do videos just like this. Um, you can become a member. You can uh, also on a live stream do super chat, super stickers. On a replay or a post like this, you can do the thanks. All of these help, and I just want to say thank you for that. Quick reminder, I do not give any private readings, so if you ever have someone reach out and pretend to be me, you know that's fake. Block and report it. Let me know about it as well. New videos are posted every Monday, Thursday, and Friday. I do live streams. I hope you join in on one of those every Sunday at 9.15 a.m. And then I do daily card readings. So you can check all of that out on my main channel. That's everything for today. So I wish you all the best and I'll see you soon. Take care.